Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. First up this week, I wanted to quickly talk about this thread from Red Herring. Macho Nacho released his Tiny Tendo video. Tiny Tendo is a portable NES made with real CPU and PPU from a real NES, just kind of cut down really small. Anyways, Macho Nacho released a video about it and it looks like some people are sort of concerned with that last bit, basically having to cut down the original NES CPU and PPU to fit into the Tiny Tendo. You can see a picture here of how small the cut down CPU is, and it's a pretty delicate process because you do have to sand down a NES CPU die basically and cut it to a specific size. And then you have to solder it onto the Tiny Tendo board kind of SMD style. So the legs of the shaved down chip here get soldered onto a PCB so that you can use it again. When I saw Red Herring talk about this, the first thing that I could think about is it should be pretty much a reversible process. Because if you're taking that CPU, it's not like you're throwing it in the garbage, you're soldering it onto a PCB to make something new and special. But it's pretty much reversible because if somebody made an adapter to go back to the NES CPU footprint, you should just be able to solder that cut down NES processor onto an adapter and then you can solder it back into a real NES. It's funny that I was thinking about that when Red Herring actually already did that. I don't think the files are available or anything, but it is pretty interesting that you could theoretically reverse the Tiny Tendo uh, trimming of the CPU and PPU and put it back into a stock console if you really wanted to. As far as my opinion about whether or not I think it's bad, the trimming thing, you know, if your trimming goes bad and you ruin a CPU, then pretty much all mods are the same thing. Because if you teach a beginner how to do it or you try to get them to do it and they ruin a console, it's pretty much the same thing. But I do think that there are a ton of NESs still out there. They made so many of those things way back when. So I think with the NES specifically, it's kind of, it doesn't really matter because there's so many of them. Next is an awesome project announcement from Martin Refseth, AKA HDR. They're announcing this Raspberry Pi RP2040 based Game Boy flash cart. If we look at the pictures here, we notice that this is a custom Game Boy PCB in a, I think this is in a, a custom aluminum enclosure. Yeah, you can kind of see the actual enclosure in this other picture. And there's the RP2040 and a micro SD card slot and a USB type C port for something, maybe upgrading firmware. And in this other picture, we can see a game select screen. So there's already a menu and it looks like games are booting because here's Tetris here playing on a Game Boy Color. Over here on the Pico Game Boy Cart GitHub, it says the project is still under development. There's a little bit of information about how the Pico Game Boy actually works. And if we look at the bottom, we can see a list of upcoming features. So support for multi-bank games, support for cart RAM, real-time clock, passing game names dynamically, and external memory card support. So that's interesting. I wonder if this is old because the photos that we saw of the actual card itself had an SD card slot already on it. Maybe they meant like the actual integration with the firmware. So this is going to be pretty interesting. I'm curious of how expensive this is going to be. If this is anywhere close to being like an EverDrive equivalent, and if it's cheap enough because it's using that Raspberry Pi RP2040, then this might be a really popular Game Boy flash card. I want to take a quick second to go over this video from Hans By Bayer. Bayer. It looks like they have a working Mistex prototype. I talked about Mistex a couple of weeks ago, so if you want to go check that video out, you should. Long story short, it's a project that aims to port Mr. Cores to other FPGAs. Anyway, so this video, we can see one of these all winner D1 processor things that we talked about in that Mistex video. Some other kind of FPGA over there, I'm not really sure. And then some kind of an output, like composite output board breakout board and then we have a game playing in the background here so while this doesn't really provide us more information about the mistex project at all it is still cool to see a prototype of this mistex system working and actually playing games next it looks like there are new capture mods for the new nintendo 2DS XL console. Now somebody's probably in the comments saying that these are not new, but this is the first time that I know that there is a new 2DS XL capture mod. Cause I know that the optimized capture mods work for the new 3DS XL. They just don't work for the new 2DS XL. So I'm excited and also not excited about learning about this. I know that murky.net, I think, really they're just a send in service. So like you send in your console, they mod it for you and they ship it back to you. Apparently these are made by Kaidi, not Katsukiti and not Loopy and not Optimize. I think this is another new maybe company. And apparently there's a V2 of the TV kit. The TV kit before was like a Raspberry Pi or something that you would plug the capture mod 
usually capture mods plug in USB to your computer and you run some software, but you plug the USB into this Raspberry Pi instead, and then you can use the HDMI output from the Raspberry Pi to use it directly in a computer. So it's more like a consoleizer versus a capture mod, which is kind of what it was designed for. So this is pretty exciting, but I'm not sure if you're actually gonna be able to get your hands on one of these to mod yourself. If anybody knows a way to get these particular new mods for the 2DS XL, leave a comment below because I have a new 2DS XL that I thought was gonna be basically unmoddable, but now I can mod it if I get a hold of one of these. Next, we have an interesting N64 Blue Retro adapter from Kevin Richardson. This is kind of interesting because it fills two of the controller ports in the front instead of just one or the maximum four. So if you watch my channel in the past, you know that I like you know as many of those ports as possible filled out. That way you're not wasting the ESP32 and the firmware. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but you're gonna be using less electricity if you use one of them versus four. Anyways, this one is at least two, so you can hook up two controllers and just have one dongle going, which is pretty cool. So pretty cool project. No news that this is gonna be available for sale or open source or anything. So we're just gonna to have to wait and see what Kevin wants to do. It's been a while since I've talked about Mr. News. This is the YC Active Encoder Board from Mr. Add-ons. Mr. Add-ons is known to be a seller of a lot of good Mr. products. So this is a really interesting adapter. Before we go to the website, let's just look at this picture for a second. So there's a VGA input on this left side here. Looks like a USB type C cable for optional power. And then there is a S video and composite video output on the other side. So you may be wondering how you actually use this thing. And Professor GLX actually had the same question here on Twitter. Mr. Adams explains that you can use it with both the analog IO board as well as using direct video. Both of those ways work with this adapter. And what is direct video? If you don't know, direct video is where you use one of these adapters where it has the HDMI output from the Mr. It's not really HDMI output. It's more like a digital video kind of, or maybe it's like an analog, it's not quite analog output, but it's some kind of a digital output, but it's over the HDMI cable. And then it goes to this, another D sub 15 or the VGA type cable there. So you can connect this if you have a non analog IO board, or you can connect a VGA cable if you have an analog board. But I think that's kind of interesting to be able to use a mister on a composite or S video television. So if you have a CRT or something just lying around and it doesn't have anything better than, maybe it doesn't have better than a composite, then this might be a cool way to use your mister on an older CRT or something that only accepts either composite or S video. And for the big story this week, we kind of have a spoiler from Greg from LaserBear. This is a project that I've kind of talked about here and there on the channel. So we know that LaserBear is working on an internal Blue Retro adapter for the Dreamcast. And we also kind of were spoiled that is going to feature some kind of like a Memcard Pro VMU functionality into this internal adapter. And now we pretty much have it confirmed because the solder mask on this PCB says VMU Pro. So maybe that's gonna be the name of it, but it looks like this is an Alpha 2 PCB. Maybe it's come a long way. And maybe 8 Mods, who is collaborating with Greg from LazyBear here kind of let them leak it a little bit. I'm not really sure. But the one interesting thing about this PCB is that there are two spaces for two different ESP32s. Greg mentioned in a comment that one of those is going to be for handling Blue Retro, uh, handling the Bluetooth connections to controllers, and the other one is going to be for the VMU, and actually looks like it might have Wi-Fi functionality as well. And it looks like Greg says that this is going to be using MapleBus control. Oh, I just looked up on the Dreamcast wiki, and it looks like MapleBus is the name of the communications bus on the Dreamcast. So. Nothing fancy that I know of. I mean, obviously it's hard to implement that communication protocol, but nothing like another mod or something. There are two other PCBs included in this picture here. It looks like one of them maybe goes around this. Is this the LED? So maybe they're gonna like bypass the onboard LED and you can use this other kind of LED, but no clue where the other one here goes. So nice leak from Greg. I think a lot of people are waiting for this to get announced. That's it for this week, but check out this video if you wanna see a promising new wireless controller for the original Xbox. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.